The movie starts at a house party, where several people have gathered. As they are enjoying their time, the power suddenly goes out. As a result, the party hosts, who are also best friends. Jonah, Stevie and Gus start looking for the problem. After a bit of searching, Stevie finds that the electricity bill has not been paid since three months. Here, we get to know that the friends are living in Jonah's house, and they organize a party every weekend so that they can earn money. Desperate to keep the party running, Jonah heads to his cocky neighbor, Silvio, and makes a deal with him in exchange for electricity. He then quickly sprints back to his friends, without telling them that he has actually made a deal. When Stevie and Gus show their appreciation to Silvio for helping him out, the latter mentions that he will need $500 and a bottle of vodka first, as promised by Jonah. Enraged, Gus confronts his carefree friend and mentions that they don't have the money to pay Silvio. However, Jonah comes up with a plan and announces to everyone that they are short of money. In no time, the party goers start donating to the cause and the electricity comes back. After this, the party continues in full swing, with everyone going wild. Meanwhile, an intoxicated Jonah heads to his bedroom with a girl named Becky and starts kissing her. During the act, Becky notices a weird lump in Jonah's genitals and mentions it to him. At first, Jonah ignores it, but later, when Becky starts describing the lump, he realizes that something is wrong. In the next scene, Jonah visits a doctor, where he is put through a series of tests. Later, he visits the same doctor in his office and learns that he has testicular cancer. Hearing this, Jonah gets shocked, and he is left speechless. However, the doctor consoles him by saying that testicular cancer is the best cancer to get, as its treatment is very effective and cheap. He also mentions that the treatment is risk-free, but for it to be successful, they will have to remove one testicle. This further worries Jonah, and he immediately asks the doctor if he will still be capable of doing romantic activities. The answer is yes, but the doctor reveals that he will become infertile forever. Meaning, he won't be able to conceive any babies. Despite this, he can still reproduce in other ways. Later, Jonah collects his semen in a jar, hoping that he can use it after a few years. Later, he breaks the news to his best friends, and they are left stunned by the revelation. Nevertheless, they encourage him to be strong, as the cancer isn't too serious. Gus and Stevie also decide to cancel next week's house party, but Jonah requests them not to do so, mentioning that it will ruin their momentum. The next day, Jonah gets a call from the hospital, and quickly departs. There, a nurse mentions to him that despite his semen being perfectly healthy, it somehow couldn't pass the freeze procedure, making it unsuitable for reproduction. This devastates Jonah, and he asks the nurse if there are other ways to have babies. After a bit of staring, the nurse simply replies if he has a girlfriend. In the next scene, Jonah heads to the party and starts drinking excessively. While in a drunken state, he starts asking random girls if they would like to reproduce with him, but since they are also drunk, they ignore him. The following morning, Stevie drives Jonah to his sister, Katie, on reaching, a worried Katie starts asking him several questions, but Jonah can't take his eyes off of her children. He feels that he only has a few days to find a solution, or else he will never be able to become a father. Determined to find a partner, he even contacts his ex-girlfriend, Ava, who he hasn't spoken to since the last four months. The duo has an awkward conversation, and when Ava asks the reason for their meetup, Jonah suddenly reveals that he wants to have babies. Since Ava does not know about his condition, she becomes enraged, and belittles Jonah for being immature. In the evening, a dejected Jonah visits his doctor for a regular checkup. The doctor mentions that he can line up a surgery appointment in three days, but Jonah mentions that it's too early. When he asks about the next appointment date, the doctor tells him that it's three weeks away. He also suggests Jonah take the nearest available slot, as cancer spreads fast. However, Jonah, 
who is adamant on having a baby, confirms that he wants to take the second appointment, as it will give him 21 days to find a partner. In the next scene, Jonah decides to approach Becky, who is notorious for sleeping with many men. His friends try their best to stop him, but Jonah does not listen. Later, he arrives at Becky's place, who is equally excited to meet him. Jonah then reveals the entire situation to Becky, and says that he wants a partner to have babies. This shocks Becky, and she mentions that despite Jonah being a wonderful person, she doesn't love him enough to have a child with him. Once again, Jonah returns home dejected. Now, with time running out, he starts talking to random people from the internet, and even meets some of them physically. However, each of his attempts go in vain as all the girls back out when they find that he wants to have babies with them. One morning, Stevie is at a restaurant with her boyfriend when she suddenly notices Jonah sitting alone in a corner. A while later, he comes over to Stevie and in front of her boyfriend, mentions that he cannot adopt children because of a strange law that prohibits cancer patients from adopting. After saying this much, he heads outside and sits alone on the footpath. Stevie tries to ignore it, but her boyfriend suggests she go out and talk to her friend. Later, Jonah and Stevie have some beers and discuss the matter in hand. Stevie suggests Jonah go after single older women, or even lesbians, if he really wants to have babies. She also mentions that the whole process will just be an arrangement, and there will be no intimacy involved in it. Jonah is skeptical about the idea, but when he realizes that he has no other options, he agrees. With this, Stevie sets up his meeting with one of her colleagues, Alison, who is a lesbian. The following day, Stevie and Jonah meet Alison, who is with her girlfriend. Soon, the two women start bombarding Jonah with questions. They ask him what he will do after becoming a father, but Jonah simply replies that he will make a time-lapse video of his kids growing up. He even mentions some insensitive things, which offends the lesbian couple. After this, he departs home along with Stevie, hoping that he will get a positive response from the couple. Sadly, the next day, Stevie receives a call from Allison, who mentions that Jonah is too immature to have a baby. Hence, they have decided against the arrangement. When Jonah gets to know of this, he gets frustrated and starts mentioning that his life is unfair. However, Stevie calms him down and tells him that he should keep trying. Being the good friend that she is, Stevie decides to set Jonah up with another of her colleagues named Claire. She is a middle-aged woman who is not looking to get married but just wants to have an affair. This time, Stevie talks to Claire herself, and describes the date as an arrangement. That night, Jonah and Claire meet each other as instructed by Stevie and instantly get attracted. Soon, they get massively drunk and start kissing on the road. The next morning, Stevie meets with Claire at work and asks how the date went. Claire reveals that it was awesome and that Jonah is a wonderful guy, but she can't go through with the procedure since she doesn't know him well. This confuses Stevie, as she was pretty sure that Claire would agree to it. She quickly confronts Jonah about last night, and the latter mentions that he couldn't harden his manhood because of the excessive tequila that he consumed. It finally dawns on Stevie that this was the reason why Claire broke off the arrangement. She berates Jonah for ruining the plan and then storms inside her room. Desperate, Jonah follows her inside and pleads with her to convince Claire for a second chance. He even mentions that he will give her house to Claire if she agrees. Hearing this, Stevie gets taken aback, and she tells Jonah that it is a ridiculous idea. However, deep down inside, she starts considering it herself. Jonah also mentions that at this point, he is willing to do whatever he can to convince a lady to have kids with him. This makes Stevie freeze for a while, but she soon snaps out of it and tells Jonah to go outside, as she has to change. That night, the house hosts another party and as usual, Jonah gets drunk. He then gathers some courage and sends a voice message to Stevie, requesting her to consider his proposal. The next morning, he wakes up to a text from Stevie, who calls him to her room. 
There, she reveals that she will accept his proposal, but only if he accepts her terms and conditions. She then hands him a long list of conditions, which Jonah takes hours to read. One of such conditions states that the whole arrangement will be a secret, while another one mentions that there will be no intimacy between them. Jonah inquires as to why she is willing to go through all this, to which Stevie replies that she loves the house, and she wants to have freedom for the rest of her life. After a while, Jonah finally finishes reading and he signs the contract, hence starting their strange relationship. He also mentions that they only have a week to make their plan work. In the next scene, the duo heads to the department store and starts collecting the necessary tools for their plan. Later, they head to a hotel, where Stevie explains the entire procedure to Jonah. She mentions that she has only four days to conceive, before her menstrual cycle kicks in. She then hands Jonah a bucket and a syringe for the procedure. However, Jonah becomes overexcited and breaks the syringe, compelling them to head back to the store. Sadly, the store is closed and they are forced to return. Stevie gets angry that Jonah wasted their first day, but the latter suggests they do it naturally. At first, Stevie resists, telling that they have been best friends for a long time, but when Jonah mentions that he will make it quick, she agrees. With this, the duo gets in bed and awkwardly starts the process. But soon, they get into it and start performing vigorously. After the encounter, the couple becomes more comfortable and they start having romantic activities every day. Gus starts doubting him, but the two convince him that nothing is happening between them. Meanwhile, Jonah and Stevie slowly start falling in love, without both of them realizing it. One day, while Stevie is at her work, she heads to the bathroom to inspect for good news, but finds out that her menstrual cycle is on time. This devastates her as all the efforts she and Jonah put through the days have gone in vain. She quickly calls Jonah and tells him to meet up in the parking lot. Wasting no time, Jonah approaches her, expecting good news. However, when Stevie tells her the truth, he becomes devastated. One thing leads to another and the two get into a small argument, causing Stevie to storm out of the place. When Jonah returns home, he finds a large mass of people gathered outside his house for the scheduled party. With all hopes now gone, Jonah decides to enjoy the party to the fullest, before he gets operated the next day. Later at night, Gus informs Jonah that he has called someone over to meet him. When Jonah heads to the living room, he finds Ava waiting for him. Turns out that Gus revealed everything about Jonah's condition to her, hoping that she will conceive with him. Ava quickly takes Jonah upstairs and apologizes for everything wrong she said during their last meeting. She also mentions that despite them being apart since the last five months, he is still a big part of her life, and that she will do anything for him. With this, the two start getting romantic and start the activity. However, before Jonah can seal the deal, he withdraws his manhood, causing him to fire outside the hole. Confused. Ava asks why he did so, to which Jonah replies that it just didn't feel right, as he is in love with someone else. Meanwhile, Stevie arrives downstairs and starts searching for Jonah to apologize to him. Sadly, when she reaches upstairs, she finds Jonah coming out of the room, along with Ava. This devastates her and she quickly leaves the place, despite Jonah trying to explain. As she tries to drive away in her car, Jonah clings onto the back and injures himself, compelling Stevie to stop. Following this, Jonah confesses his love for Stevie, but the latter replies that she wants to have babies, which she can never have with him. Saying this much, she drives away, while Jonah stands alone, heartbroken. In the next scene, Jonah is accompanied by Gus, Katie, and her children to the hospital. Later, when the doctor is questioning him, Stevie arrives there. Katie immediately deduces that her brother is in love with Stevie and clears the room for them. After this, Stevie apologizes for her statements from the previous night, but Jonah mentions that she didn't say anything wrong. 
He then mentions that he is content with being a cool uncle, rather than a father. Meanwhile, Gus enters the room and hugs his best friend, telling him that everything will be fine. However, as he prepares to leave with Stevie, she gets emotional and kisses Jonah, right in front of Gus. The movie ends as Jonah is taken into the operation room, while Gus is left in utter disbelief on what just happened.